YouTube recently rejected my application to be monetized because of reused content, so I think it's best I don't play the themes to Band of Brothers or The Pacific in this video, as much as I want to. Obviously I'll still show video from them, but if you wanted to re-familiarize yourself with how the music scores sound, I've linked them in the description and probably the comments too. In my opinion, Steven Spielberg's and Tom Hanks' Band of Brothers is the best war TV series, film, th thing, the best war thing ever made. I've watched it quite a few times over the years, often with my dad since I was a little kid, and I watched it again recently. And every time it makes me cry, it's just a fantastic show. And then The Pacific, which they made nine years later, is also incredibly good with brilliant dialogue, top class acting, possibly even better action scenes than Band of Brothers. Plus, it dares to show you the much darker sides of war, with Lecky taking time out in a hospital to recover, Snafu throwing stones into a dead soldier's head, and the nightmare Sledge has afterwards. Nonetheless, it doesn't quite hit the same heights as Band of Brothers, which isn't a criticism by any means, because Band of Brothers is the pinnacle. But the Pacific isn't as good, and I think you can tell that just from the opening credits of both series alone, which is what I wanted to do today, because it interests me. We're just going to talk about the openings and maybe a little bit on the endings of both shows and how they tell us everything we need to know. So let's start with the Band of Brothers opening credits. The images have the colour taken out to the point they're almost black and white and many of them are all freeze frames made to look like photos that come from old folded bits of paper which for one makes it feel like these were real life photos taken of real soldiers 75 years ago which is important of course because this is a true story depicting the real lives of soldiers from Easy Company. It's important that fact remains at the front of our minds, and each image fades into the next one like fleeting moments of life fading away into the past, but even more than that though, this isn't just a slideshow of still images because many of them come as shutter speed images where you get several fragmented shots of the same moment in time, a few seconds after the last one which adds to this fleeting feel because it's like you're almost reanimating this moment from the past, but it's, it's fragmented and broken up, you can't capture it entirely. And then the shutter speed stops as the final image falls completely still and lingers there for a few seconds before fading away into the next one. It's an incredibly sad, incredibly ghostly effect that reconnects you to the fact a lot of these people are dead now. A lot of them died during the war, during these sort of moments we get to see fleeting images of. They faded away and became these memories we're now trying to hold on to. And the fact they are shown on folded bits of paper makes you think of the sort of photographs the soldiers themselves would carry round with them through the war. Photos of their loved ones that they would keep close, that would give them hope, remind them what they're fighting for. Now we hold these images of them close to remind us what they fought for and what they did for us. And of course most of the images are shots from poignant moments in the show, like I mentioned earlier, Bucky dropping his helmet into the snow, life staring into the sky, but even the nice moments we see here. There's Malarkey driving around the British countryside with a beer in his hands, there's Garnier joking around while playing cards. That, even that feels incredibly sad to see these moments of joy in their lives captured, knowing what they then had to go through and how it stuck with them for the rest of their lives. To see their happiness there knowing that they've now passed on. And also throughout all these images we get the silhouettes of the company walking slowly past, faded slightly like they're ghosts still walking together in the afterlife, but as the sequence goes on, we slowly see more of them until at the end, after the final photo, which is fittingly a group photo with the company, we see them walk across the field where they then stand together in a line, that iconic image below the words Band of Brothers, which just cements how strong their bond was. In this opening sequence we've literally seen them walk through all the moments of the war, walking through these images together to reach here, still joined, still close. And the way they freeze into these positions, as though becoming statues, cements in our minds just how monumental these people were, and how monumental everything they did was. Because they, alongside countless others, gave their lives for the sake of us, for the idea of us. And I'm going to discuss the music in a second, but the crucial thing to remember through all of this is that the sense of brotherhood is the integral point. That's the name of the show and the original book. It's what we see with them standing together here. This is an opening sequence that wants to convey the sense of companionship like no other. That wants us to know it was their unbreakable bonds that got them through horrors the like of which many of us will never understand. More than their cause to protect their nations and their people, more than 
their desire to get back home more than any medals and glory. It was their bond with each other that brought them through it that kept them going and kept them alive. And the music, this score by Michael Kamen, I know it probably sounds stupid, but I put it up there as one of my favourite pieces of classical music of all time. Probably in the top five. Um, it's somehow a piece of music that manages to sound both incredibly sad and incredibly hopeful at the same time. That's, that's the magic of it. It's very soft, with this soft choir throughout that reminds me of that moment in the show after possibly the worst part of the entire conflict, Bastogne where they're huddled up in a church and a choir sings for them and to just sit together somewhere warm with a sound like that would have been divine for them. And when we hear this soft choir singing in the main theme it brings the same sense of sacredness to what they did, to what they were fighting for, what brotherhood means. Companionship is a sacred thing and this choir with the strings and this very gentle swaying feel to the piece that could almost lull you to sleep if it weren't so very sad at the same time. What's powerful about it is that it doesn't have any of the harshness and force that you'd expect from the theme of a series about World War II to have. It's so moving because it focuses on the heart beneath all the horrors and the tumult and the, the explosions of war. It focuses on the sort of emotions that kept them alive through the time of crisis, the soft, sad and hopeful pockets of divinity they would have found amongst themselves. It's not a theme that says, this is war, hear it in all its thunder and fire. It's a theme that says, this is what matters, this is the sacred, wounded but still surviving heart beneath all the suffering. And you hear all that in the theme. It. It's got this way of rising slowly up to this peak, where it reaches a moment of silence, like the whole orchestra is holding its breath, then gently drifts back down again and repeats the melody once more. What's powerful about that is that despite this rising wave and this moment of silence, it, it never breaks, it never crashes away into something tumultuous, things never fall apart, but just gently drift back down into something soft and comforting once more. It's like they're just about coping, being brought to the very brink but never quite snapping because they can pull each other through it which is perhaps what makes companionship so sacred in the first place it stops people from snapping it can pull humanity through the very worst of suffering that's the power of having people around you that's the power of their togetherness and you hear it in the music until on the final repeat of the melody this rising wave and this held breath drifts down into peaceful happy contented sleep they earn their rest at last. In my opinion, it's the best opening credits to anything that's ever been made. The Pacific took a different approach to their opening. I'll talk about the music to it first, seeing as I've just talked about the Band of Brothers music. Um, it opens with a very low, stirring, rumbling tension that a lone trumpet comes out of. Um, it, it might not be a trumpet, it might be a horn or a trombone, I, I, I don't really know that stuff. Um, but it has these four notes that appear at various points throughout the theme. They come again, um, and violins follow on from those four notes and carry it off into the rest of the melody. And it's pretty stirring. This lone trumpet becomes a sound of hope and meaning and a reminder for what they're fighting for. And during moments of darkness and tension in the theme, it calls out again to revive them. And then as the theme goes on, the violins become stronger and we get drums and it all slowly builds to this moment of crescendo where suddenly the theme flips on its head. The sadness we heard before bursts into this triumph, it sounds glorious and uplifting and ends with a feel that something tremendous has been achieved. And the trumpet then calls out again as the melody concludes and that low rumbling slowly dies down away now as with the drums getting quieter and quieter until it falls into contented sleep. There's similarities in what I've described there to the Band of Brothers theme, but the few differences I think underpin why, for me, it's just not as powerful. Because the Band of Brothers theme is very soft and uses its choir to sing something sacred, whereas the Pacific theme opts for a trumpet. The Band of Brothers theme rises but never quite breaks, never loses its gentleness, always drifts back down, whereas the Pacific theme does break, it smashes in with cymbals and heavy thunderous drums and calls for this moment of stirring triumph, which in my eyes feels less human, more forced in its sentiments. It seems to want us to feel the triumph and the glory of war, hence using a trumpet instead of soft human voices, hence the glorious crash of instruments, hence calling the theme honour. 
whereas the Band of Brothers theme is called Requiem for a Soldier. It seems like here the idea of honour is put at the forefront, rather than brotherhood and companionship, and you hear that in the music, honour being the thing of duty and medals and the glory of war, um, patriotism. Which I'm not trying to undermine, you know, I've never been a patriotic person myself, but I can fully empathise with why people are and why it feels so stirring for them. However, it's never going to be as stirring as Requiem for a Soldier, a song that says this isn't about honour or glory or any of that. It's about a band of brothers supporting each other. It's about these real people who pulled themselves through the hardest of times because of their connection to each other. That's much more human and much more moving as a result. And let's look at the video as well for it, which again is similar in a lot of ways. You get desaturated images that fall into still photos and like Band of Brothers had their photos on folded bits of paper, here we see them drawn as sketches in graphite that then come to life. It's a similar effect, however, the difference here is that the shots of the graphite itself seem to take the foreground. We see lots of shots of drawing lines and rolling graphite over paper and all of that, which is symbolic, in the same sort of way you're reanimating these ghostly moments of past human lives for a fleeting second, plus um, you feel the shattering of war in the way the graphite itself breaks away into shrapnel, but it's like the symbolism of this takes over, where seeing those actual images of actual humans are relegated to the background. The thing we emotionally connect with is the soldiers and their faces, the, the fragmented scenes from the show, not, not the graphite sticks. They take over to such an extent that we're distanced from the soldiers. It's so busy making its artistic point that we're denied a chance to connect. Which is unsurprising, because like with the music, it's not putting these real soldiers at the forefront and their bonds of friendship. It's putting the honour and glory of war first. The final shot we see here isn't a group photo with a company, nor the soldiers standing together having walked through hell. It's this zoomed out sketch of one soldier carrying another. Which again, symbolically, it's a very good image, but we don't connect emotionally half as much, because it seems more like it's forcing the message, this is what heroism looks like, rather than just saying, these are real people who live like you do now. And it's also got these blots of red that appear at times, which suggests the Japanese flag. Um, I find that confusing. Why are you painting Japanese flags into the background? Is, is it because they're the enemy? That seems a slightly superficial reason, you know? Do you want us to feel like they're still the enemy? I find it confusing, I don't know. Um, I guess I've sounded very critical here of this theme. But that's only in comparing it to Band of Brothers, it's still a very good theme, it's still moving, just not half as moving. It's more forced, because it's more like a typical war theme that centres on the glory and the, the drama of war, let's say. Um, it's what you'd expect, whereas the Band of Brothers opening credits completely subverts what's expected of a war film, and instead, as a result, manages something much more creative and much more moving. Putting it simply, Band of Brothers was about a band of brothers. More than just the main characters, we got to know most of the people in Easy Company incredibly well because we saw all of them interacting with each other all the time. That, that kind of was the aim of the show, to get us to know and connect to the entire company. We got to know not just um, Winters and Nixon, but Lipton, Malarkey, Bull, Luz, Blythe, Piconti, Buck, Garnier, um, loads of them. They all mattered to us, that's what the series was about, the bond between them. And while they were probably intending to do something similar with the Pacific, they must have lost some of their focus on that aim, hence the title just being named after the place they were fighting. In the Pacific, the three main characters are Sledge, Leckie and Bass alone, and they all have pretty separate stories and don't really interact with the same group of people, which means we don't get as much of a sense of the company, we don't get proper time to get to know anyone else. There's Snafu and Runner, but apart from them, you can kind of finish the series not being entirely sure on everyone else's names or who they are. And this issue becomes clearest when we look at the endings. Because at the end of Band of Brothers, the surviving characters all play baseball together in the warm sun, and it feels hopeful and hard-earned. And the main theme plays underneath, while Winter's voiceover tells us what each of them went on to do and what happens to them all. The camera slowly pans to each of them, and it feels like we're Winters, sitting there, watching this company happily enjoying themselves. Then, when it gets to Winters himself, after telling us what he went on to do, he adds, There is not a day that goes by that I do not think of the men I served with, 
who never got to enjoy the world without war. The Pacific does the same thing in a much more removed way. The story itself ends with Sledge in a field looking up at the sky, trying to adjust to civilian life, and then we get this sequence of finding out what happened to them all simply as a picture of each soldier and a bit of text. It feels more distanced. And because we didn't get to know them as well, it's hard to remember who half of them even are. I mean, obviously they couldn't do the same thing of playing baseball or whatever, because the Pacific ends after they've all gone back home and returned to their separate lives, but doing it this way feels a little more tacked on. You know, they could have included it into the story itself somehow. But again, I don't mean to sound so critical of the Pacific, because I still love it. You know, I've, I've got it on box set, I've seen it several times, it's still one of the best war series there is. But there is a reason, it just isn't quite as good as Band of Brothers, it doesn't quite live up to it. And I think that shows when you compare the opening credits. That's everything I have to say today though, um, if you like the video anyway, let me know by liking it or leaving a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.